Members of the Fly Music Society, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. I think this is probably the most excited I've been for a reaction in a little while. The cool thing about this channel is I'm learning about a lot of different artists, but it's when we go back and repeat some of the artists is when I enjoy that. And this is the only artist we've repeated so far and that's about to change. But I think my favorite reaction that I did honestly was the Ren and Chinchilla rendition of Chalk Outlines. And I really enjoyed that. You all know I got emotional on that one, which is unusual for me, but today we're gonna be listening to How To Be Me Live by Ren and Chinchilla. So I'm I'm extremely excited about this one. Here's what I know. Obviously I know Ren, obviously I know Chinchilla. I know both of them can sing. I know Chinchilla has probably one of the most amazing pipes I've heard in a long time. I also know that this was written about Ren's friend, if I'm not mistaken, who committed suicide. So this is a heavy song yet again. And a lot of you were saying that this is going to be more emotional than the last one. So <laughs> I don't know how that's possible. We're going to we're going to listen to it and find out. For those of you that are new to the channel, what we do here is we listen to the song. I interject here and there during the song for things that I believe are important. And then at the end of the song, we talk about the message and we talk about the music. Without further ado, let's get into this and see if I get emotional again, which I probably will. Don't know how it's going to be more emotional than a uh, chalk outline, but we'll see. Here we go, guys. One, two, three, Again, I'm going to stop. I want to go back. The cool thing about these songs so far, this one matches chalk outlines is how simple it is. Right. And what I mean by that is, you know, there's not a bunch of different instruments. There's not a backing track. There's not, you know, this, this EDM type of bass behind it. It's a guitar and singing. That's it. With that means that there's a lot of blemishes that can come out. There's a lot of imperfections that can happen or that can be very prevalent and obvious. What's interesting though, is with that, when you're doing it this way, when it's live is you do a lot of your singing and playing by feel. And there's a note here that she slides up to. She meant to do that note, but that note is not exactly where I think it would have, it was going to go. She shoots it high and then comes back down. I'm not saying that she can't sing it. That was intentional and it just gives it more of a kind of a tense feeling and it's a little bit of dissonance to go with it, right? So let's hear that again. Overshot it a little bit, but that was purposeful. Their voices together are just crazy. I don't feel safe in this bed. There are voices in my head. I've been talking to the dead And the fear baptized me My kingdom Before they get into the harmonies here I don't feel safe in this bed I'm talking to the dead I, I think What I think what's interesting is literally the first line of chalk outlines from the get-go like already spoke to me. I feel like he's very good at having the first line of every song be important or at least these kind of intimate songs like this. Don't feel safe in your bed. I, I can't tell you how many times that I've woken up and felt like when I wake up that I don't feel right. I don't feel like the day is going to go well from the get-go. And that's how I kind of interpret that. But I also think it's an existential thing, right? Obviously, this is about his friend that just died. So I'm sure his feeling is that if somebody like that could, you know, take their own life, why should he feel safe? Why should he feel like he's safe in, in his bed? Maybe there's, you know, with all of the, the issues in his health and his mental health, that maybe he isn't safe either. And I think that's really heavy. Just like the last time, they're looking deep into each other's eyes. Now, I'd... I don't know how their relationship is in real life, right? But 
if you think about just like talking to somebody and I have social anxiety, but just talking to somebody and looking them in the eye the whole time, like I feel like a little awkward, but the fact that it's not awkward for them, it just shows how emotional and kind of in this environment and space that they've created with the song. Our voice is in my head. I've been talking to the dead and the fear but ties me. So my poetic. kingdom turned to dust and I watched all my riches rust. Have I lost the Midas touch or do sad eyes blind me? Oh. I like that. Have I lost the Midas touch or do sad eyes blind me? I think with every emotion, like especially anger, especially sadness, our emotions get the best of us and they cloud our judgment, right? And I think that's kind of what he's going about here. I, I have to say, we all know Ren can sing and this channel has since the get go been praising Ren for his skills, for his singing skills, his artistry, his writing skills, his lyricism. Like the whole package. We all know that Ren has the whole package. Chinchilla needs her props, man. Her tone and her voice. We saw her belt and chalk outlines. I'm sure it'll be in this, but I don't know. To be able to control your tone, singing very softly as they are right now, is very difficult. I want to dive into more Chinchilla, Chinchilla outside of Ren because her singing, while I don't know if her music might be up my alley or not. I want to almost do a discovery on her voice and analyze her voice because it's, it's, I've never heard a voice like hers and I've never heard somebody be able to control her voice like she does. Have I lost the Midas touch or do sad eyes blind me? Over and over we go. Over the hills and the valleys below Oh, and it follows me, follows me home And it suffocates me I want you guys to notice too This is something that wouldn't happen in the studio This is something that happens live When they're feeding off of each other When she says home, she doesn't actually say home She essentially just like mouths it, right? Let's him take the spotlight for home. Oh, and it follows me, follows me home. And See that? it suffocates me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't breathe. I said, oh, I can't breathe. All I know. I forgot how to be me. Okay, I want to go back since it's going to start the new section. No, I can't breathe. So, as I said before, the very soft kind of low they're not ex ex pushing out a lot of air when they're singing this part they're both in falsetto but it's a very nasal falsetto and then they're using all of that energy that's kind of getting trapped nasally when they're doing that sound and pushing it back out to create that tone that comes out next it might be something that's kind of second nature to them because they've been doing this for a long time and they've worked on their voice but it's something that it's very difficult to, the average singer can't do that. You can tell, obviously we've seen Chill before, but you can tell her voice can hit those notes and hit them with an impact and just belt them out. But she's not, she's controlling the tempo, but it still sounds amazing. I said, oh, I can't breathe, all I know. And Ren's doing the falsetto the entire time. Is I forgot how to be me. He hit the note. Hit the expected note that time. I don't feel safe in these holes. There are bruises. 
houses on the walls There are bodies in the floors And they breathe so loudly I wish I could move Get up and walk right out this tomb Do our saviors die too soon For my sins so Round me Over and over we go Over the hills and the valleys below Always be follows me Follows me Follows me And it suffocates me And I know I said it before. Uh, I was talking about how I I know that she can belch because we've heard it before. And uh, I, I just... Sorry, guys. Here's the thing, right? I'm going to go back to her voice in a second. <clears throat> uh, when she belches like that, it invokes something inside of me that not a lot of artists <clears throat> do. Um, I don't think it's just the fact that she can control her tone of voice and that it's powerful and that it's amazingly like controlled. And I think it's more so the emotion that she puts into it. Right. And I'm a firm believer that a lot of the good singers that can do that have learned to channel their emotions into the singing. Uh, so I was already holding in my emotions for that. It's part of the reason I was quiet and also just that they captivated me. But uh, I, when, when, when Ren said, what was it? Uh, Where were you, my God? Where were you? Uh, I feel like uh, <clears throat> that I resonate with that, man. Um, I'm not ready to talk about some of the stuff I went through in my life. Just, I'm just not ready for that. But I went through some things where, you know, I used to be pretty religious. I used to be my family was Roman Catholic, so we were pretty religious, and I just went through so much in a short amount of time that I, I lost, I legitimately and literally lost my faith. I lost a lot of things, and I felt felt abandoned. Um, I. Uh, and it was rough. Uh, and it was in a time of my life where I needed to focus on myself, not just mentally, but my career. What am I going to do? I was in my first couple of years in, in college and uh, I was already teetering on focusing on the wrong things, you know, social life, partying and things just got worse and the, my 
my side of this that seesaw of life just got way too heavy and I crumbled under the pressure and not for my friends I uh I wouldn't uh be here so uh, I hate this so much not not the song not the song guys the emotion uh there was something else I wanted to mention. And we're going to do a complete vocal and musical analysis because I feel the there's aspects of their voices that need to be talked about, but uh, I need to get through the song first. I forgot how to be. Nothing is pulling me through. That's, uh, my God, where were you? Nothing is pulling me through. Uh, yeah, man. That's, uh, I feel like that's pretty on the head, on the, on the nose. The way that Ren is able to write songs, and I've mentioned this in the comments before, but he's able to have poetic lines without making them so abstract that they can be misinterpreted. And what I mean by that is, I mean, I, I literally just said what those two lines mean. Uh, uh, so it's just, it's very refreshing to see somebody be, have that mixture of poetic and succinctness, for lack of a better term. And I think that's very cool. Um, we're gonna back up. I wanna listen to this whole section again. on Got me again, man. We're going to go through the whole thing again and talk about their voices and a little bit about the music, but I want to talk about the message first. Obviously, everybody's lost people in their lives. I've known people that have ended it for themselves, but I, I haven't, it hasn't been somebody that was necessarily close to me. But what I do know is that strife like this can happen from all different things. And I think that uh, music is just missing emotion. You know, at least on the radio, and I'm not going to get dive deep into this, but at least on the radio, I feel like a lot of all the music that I hear on the radio is pretty much emotionless. It's produced, it's overproduced, it's let's take this template that we have and give it to every single artist that's out there ever created that literally every single tune pretty much has the same tempo same chord progression same sound besides all the other things and all the other praises that we've given to ren i think the fact that he puts so much emotion into these songs is i don't know what is going on with me today it's very refreshing um and I know <clears throat> part of his vocal, part of his vocals is kind of that 
wavering tremolo that he does it's almost like it's anguish and that's just part of his singing it was very prevalent in the jenny and screech trilogy but it also fits here obviously he has a lot of anguish that that he's going through i don't want to repeat myself from what was said in shock outlines but you know to have somebody that you know might be able to voice what you're going through kind of better than you not better but in a way that makes sense to others and being able to resonate with that and being able to feel what they feel I feel like that's important and I feel like that's what makes art art is being able to relate to art um I've never really opened up about those. Well, the one I mentioned was a particular time, but those couple of times in my life where it was the darkest for me. Um, and maybe Ren's the same way. Again, I don't know him in person, but I feel like music is that avenue to do that. And uh, I feel like we're looking at it from the outside and not digging into the message and not digging into the music, which is what we do here. But if we're not doing that, this is not something that like if I had listening on the background that I would actually listen to on a daily basis. And Chalk Outlines was the same way. But because of the message, because of the emotion, because of what it stands for, because of the resonation, because of all of those things, this is definitely a song that, you know, I'd, I'd have on repeat. And I think that is an aspect of music. So many people worry about, oh, you can't dance this song or it doesn't have a good beat. There's so much more to music than that. And I've been rambling for a long time and I still want to get into their voices and the music. Let's back up. Let's talk about their voices because obviously this is a vocal heavy track, just like Chalk Outlines. And then I'll play some guitar for you guys to talk about what he's doing. He's essentially, after talking about using the same three chords, but this is different. He's essentially using three chords in this song, just playing different tempos and melodies, or I guess different tempos and rhythms. It drives the tune, so we're going to talk about that too. But let's talk about their vocals. No, I can't breathe. I said, oh, I can't breathe. Both of them are using their head voice, Ren more so than Chinchilla here. With the tone that they're going for, the kind of light, soft tone, I feel that that's appropriate. It definitely helps keep that soft tone while still being able to hit those kind of intense notes, right? I think it works here, and I, I obviously it's intentional, right? And those false settles are so crisp. Let's keep going. All I know. Is I forgot how to be me. Back to his best voice. And again, that's the note I expected the first time. There are bruises on the walls. I want you guys to notice. So Ren does this a lot, and it I think it's intentional but subconscious, right? He did a lot in the Jenny and Screech where he uses his mouth to kind of enunciate and kind of give a different intonation of, of the words he's saying, but there are bruises on bruises. So he says he does it. There's a better example later, but bru so you could say bruises on the walls, right? Pretty straightforward. Or you could say there are bru. So it's, it's very like intense and it brings the intensity forward and it gives it a different sound. And he does, he does do that a lot. It's all intentional, but half of it's emotion and half of it is to, you know, change, change the intonation, right? There are bodies bodies. In closing his eyes. Bodies in the floors. Instead of bodies in the floor. So it sounds different, right? It's a different tone. It's a different sound than if he just sang it straight. Little nuances to their voices that both of them do, uh, but Ren especially does this. And they breathe so loudly. I wish I could move. Get up and walk right out this tomb. Right out. 
So she did a falsetto there. There you go. I wish I could move. Get up and walk right out this tomb. Right out this tomb. She quickly went up there. Again, she doesn't have to do that. She's singing by feel. It's kind of, I don't want to say playing around with the notes, but it just makes it sound a lot more unique and a lot uh, better than just singing it straight, right? Round me over and I like this uh, call and answer. She's going into her falsetto there. In the valleys below For my sins Surround me Over and over we go Over the hills and the valleys I'll say at the end Always be follows me Follows Not because she can't hit the notes But it's to kind of pretty it up Decorate it a little bit For lack of a better term That's what she's doing there Very interesting of course, that's the most replayed spot. I, I want to talk about how soulful her voice is. I think that's one of the things that resonates, not resonates, that gets me emotional is those soulful voices, right? Kate's me. It's in the note. Oh, that uh, nasal buildup that they do helps with that distortion that I'm calling soulful, but that helps with the distortion that's coming out of her at that point. She could still do it, obviously, without that buildup, but the nasal build brings energy back to her mouth when she does that loud part, the outburst, and gives her more distortion. Uh, again, a technique that probably is second nature and she doesn't even know she's doing it, but that comes with practice. You learn how your voice works. You learn how your voice reacts to certain things, especially in the live setting, right? So... Very cool. That's what got me emotional. He goes lower. She goes higher. Both go into falsetto at the same time. I want to mention everybody shows their emotion very, very different. And I think I'm assuming Sam's recording this again. He's very keen on who to look at when they're singing, right? Okay. I just noticed something. Look where he's looking when he's like, this is him actually. This is him actually letting out his grief through this performance. Look where he's looking. That whole time he's looking up, he's talking to God. He's asking where he was in this sarcastic hallelujah. Beautiful. Uh, I mean, I guess I should listen to you guys when you guys say stuff is more emotional. I just, I didn't think it could get more emotional for me where I could resonate with it something more. But I want to talk about the music real quick. He's just doing three chords, like I said before. A major. goes to uh straightforward and then it's the hallelujah part is uh where is my god where were you hallelujah. nope 
that's it. So pretty straightforward. Changing up the dynamics to match. He's using not his guitar not only to play the chords, but to also play uh percussion in a sense changing up the rhythm the rhythm the rhythm changing up the rhythm like that is kind of what that's used for the guitar is not just to make cool licks and riffs and stuff most of the time it's part of the rhythm section so it is to drive the rhythm very cool obviously their vocals are what matters here i think it's important man this type of music i think why it resonates with me so much is just the raw emotion that's put into these um I'm definitely going to be diving into more Chinchilla. I think her voice, much like we said, Ren is a once in a lifetime talent. I think Chinchilla's voice is a once in a lifetime voice. I think it's, if she somehow makes it into the mainstream and they don't try to alter her and they leave her as she is, I think she can change music. I think she really can. I honestly want success for both of them, um, but it's, this is a powerhouse duo and I hope they make hundreds of more songs together honestly because the emotion that they push off of each other is just incredible um all right guys I've been talking for 45 minutes this video got out of control but I do appreciate you guys so much for hanging out with me on this analysis for those of you who loved it and are sticking around make sure you like subscribe hit that notification bell you do now have the ability to become a member to my YouTube for under four dollars you can also go to my patreon there's going to be lots of cool stuff on my patreon you can get access to videos like this 24 hours early along with being able to ask for reactions and being at the top of the list and getting first dibs on which videos i react to so that's very much appreciated but not expected tell somebody that you love them show some support to your friends ask how they're doing and please do remember that good vibes are contagious